Good morning. It's me again. We're at our farm, bringing in the uh, harvest. Harvest time again. Let's follow our James with his uh, combine and all his trailers. Be good to see you. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I keep getting this wrong. Now it's over that side or that side, but hit that subscription button. And if you get a chance, ring that bell. That'd be good for me. Thanks ever so much. Here we go. Here we are with James in the cab. This time, it's not so tight. So how are we doing, James? Yeah, living the dream. Living the dream. Yeah. Enjoying the combining. Uh, it's not too bad. No. Yeah. Is this one of your favourite jobs or least favourite jobs? It's the best job on the farm. Is it? Yeah. And as the governor, you, you obviously drive the combine. Yeah. And what are we cutting here? Spring wheat. Is it a good crop? No. Oh. It's got stressed from the drought. Well, not drought, but it's been too dry and too hot. Yeah, and so you're not... What's the... Uh, have you tried the dryness test on it yet? Oh, you can do it on a monitor. It's fluctuating because it's... It's borderline green in places and in other places it's all right. Yeah. It's 17 and a half here. That's not good though, is it? It wants to be about 12, does it? Uh, boss thinks it's all right. Oh, well, <laughs> the boss thinks it's alright, it's alright. Yeah. That's the main thing. So what have you been up to? It's it been a busy year for you or has it been a quiet time? Uh, we've been busy since spring really. Really? More spring drilling. There's nothing got planted in the winter. No, know? that's right. Too much, too much rain. Too wet and now it's too dry. Yeah. It's gone from... It, well, it only rained twice in the winter time, didn't it? But it only stopped once, didn't it, really? <laughs> you can so, say that. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many acres is this field, mate? Uh, um, 30 on, I think. 30 on acres. Yeah. Get it all done today? Yeah, easy. Easy? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. 
And what's the combine we're using today? New Ireland CX88. It's new to us yep. this year. We did have a John Deere. We did have a John Deere, but that's a part of shit. Right. And what sort of, uh, you've got a big tank on the back, what sort of storage is in the tank? I think it's 9 ton, it's 11,000 litres. Oh, okay. Whatever that is in ton. Yeah. Sorry, that's my... Alarm 20, is it? No, that's the alarm power lines. We've got quite a few power lines that are oh, a bit too low. Yeah. And the other driver, when I'm busy, is a bit forgetful. Oh, God. So, well, we don't want to do that, do we? It rules out anything like that. Yeah. I've lost my grain car, so I have to. Are, are we into in there? Yeah. Let's see if I can get a little bit of a shot. It's nice to be in here because it's nice and uh, cool. Cool, but yeah. um, let's get a shot from the outside. You, uh, this year then? Is that all your field next door as well? Yeah, that's, that was all winter week. Uh, so, tell, tell the people what's the difference between winter wheat and spring wheat then? No, I don't actually know. Oh, right, okay. Sorry. So I, one's planted in the winter and one's planted yeah, in the spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't tend to do much spring work here. Because it doesn't, we don't think it yields as well. No. So, it's got to have the winter, really, isn't it? The winter wheat is what? What pays for everything really, and everything else is just the crop you have to grow. Yeah. Like our rate this year is terrible. Oh, is it? Uh, it's, it's just terrible. The amount that you spend on that, and the yields we've got, is just unreal. Really? How many acres you got in rate? Near 200. Really? It's just it's crap. Have you combined that already? That's <laughs> still some to go. Is it really? It hasn't gone off. Why is that then? Is it just. Some of it. It's, we had a real big flea beetle hit, yeah. and then it come back, and then we had a pigeon hit. Oh. And then it didn't stop raining in the winter, and it just didn't come to anything, and then it come late. We had to spray it off real late. Yeah. And then the chemical, you know, wouldn't, just didn't hit it, just, just didn't, it's still green underneath. That's, that's the, I mean, most farmers are going to struggle this year, aren't they? We, what, the winter rains and now the summer heat. I think it's the changing of the seasons. Really? Yeah, I think we're going to get wet winters and dry summers. Really? Right. I don't know. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm a lot older than you, obviously, uh, James. But uh, I seem to remember, like years ago, it was like back in '76. It was the hottest summer for years. I was still spunk then. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but it changed again. But you're right. Climate change is an issue, we all got a... I don't think it's climate change, I just think it's the way the world has changed. Everything's changing. Yeah. Things obviously shit. Since it's... I've been farming, it's always been like it. Really? Dry summer, it's getting hotter and hotter. Yeah. I mean, the trouble is with Kent, though, is uh, we're building, aren't we? We seem to be building, building and building. Yeah. Yeah. Roads and more housing, more housing. I mean, you know, I had many a happy time in the countryside when I was young. And it's just being carved up there, isn't it? Yeah. So, but then you, you also find a lot of farm owners like to doing that because they can generate more money for the farm, can't well, they? Well, obviously. The land. But do you think it's the younger, the, the the sons of the farmers selling it off because it's quick buck? No, I think it, if the money's there to add, you would have it, wouldn't you? 
Well, I suppose we're, we're only on this earth once, aren't we? Exactly. Why make life hard for yourself? You can make a few million pounds from a bit of ground, yeah. but you can invest back into the farm to make life easier and better. Why would you not? Yeah, but we're not making no more land, are we? No. 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 I know, I know a machine like yeah. this costs a few pounds as well. I mean, we're talking probably hundreds of thousands for this, aren't we? What is this? 120 or something? 120 second thousand. Hand second hand as well. So, can you imagine, you know... It's and it only gets used two months of the year. Yeah, and it's sitting in the shed. It's sitting in the shed, costing money, because you have to do a lot of work to but it. But the trouble is with contractors, then you're at their beg and will then, aren't you? So, yeah. you know, you've got to, When they're not busy, you want them... When they're very busy, you want the wheat in. But when they're not busy, it's too late, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. This this part of the country seems to be a lot drier than everywhere else. Yeah, well, the wheel, the wheel is. Yeah. I mean, I've noticed that down my lakes. The wheel is very dry. I mean, up in London, it's rained, and down in the wheel, it, it just hasn't. No, hasn't at all. And everyone's in the same boat, so it doesn't, you know. Oh yeah. There's no, you can't lose sleep because everyone's in it. The next door neighbour is getting freaking good yields and we're not, there's something wrong isn't there? Yeah, yeah, oh well, but you're doing something wrong. No one's, everyone's in the same boat, everyone's struggling this year, yep. no one's yields are great. So will that drive up the, the prices for the wheat or will it? No, I mean, they'd get it from a port, wouldn't they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I look at the American channels and they have thousands of acres of wheat, don't they? Yeah, um, but they get big subsidies from the government. Oh, do they? Oh, okay. So I suppose, what, Eastern Europe is our main competition? No, everywhere affects the market. Really? I think, I'm not 100% someone was having different. Yeah. But everyone, if America flood the market, then surely our market would make this. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, you've got to have a wage, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and that's, you know, and that's why small farms can't compete. 300 acres, you just can't we're make a, a wage. We're a thousand and we've, you know, the thousand acre farms just soon start disappearing and then bigger farms take over. Yeah. And then yeah. the average size would be 3,000 acres. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the bigger farms, buying the small farms, upsell all the properties, did not they? Yeah. And then going three times a year to drill, to spray, to harvest, did not they? Yeah. And you, know? you can, you know, in your 3,000 acre farm 20 years ago, had five or six blokes, now it's two blokes. Yeah, and same with you. you. You got yourself and what, one extra person? They're helpers, they're not here full time. No, I'm they're the only full time. You're the only full timer. But do you enjoy farming though? Yeah, yes and no. The seasons are, are good though, aren't they, really? Do I'm starting to miss summer a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you spend all time in here, didn't you? Yeah, all yeah, time yeah. in a tractor. And, uh, but that's more than tractors though, isn't it, really? Air con, air conditioning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Life changes when you become a father, doesn't it? You like, oh, yeah. yeah. So how many ch children have you got? got then? One. Got one child. Fantastic. Well, I've enjoyed this little chat with you, James. I'm going to jump out in a minute and get my GoPro uh, before it goes into the. I am watching it. Goes into the machine and swallows it up. But we'll catch you in a minute, shall we? Well, let's. I'll tell you what. No, I'll wait until I get to the other end of the field. This is a long walk. <laughs>
Well, I'm afraid that's the end of the video now. A short video about bringing the harvest in. James is in the combine now. And uh, it gives us a good chat this morning. And it's been really enjoyable to listen to his stories. His father's been in farming all his life. He's coming up retirement age shortly. I'm hoping to meet him and tell us some of the stories. Because after all, once these old guys retire and drop off their perch, not saying he's going to drop off their perch, obviously. Oh, no, please. And, uh, but them stories of farming back in the old days are gone forever. That's why I enjoy ploughing matches. I enjoy all the, the history of old farming life. And uh, if there's anybody out there who lives in Kent or in Sussex or within sort of like a good uh, range of me, let me come along and film your farm. Tell us all about the stories of your farm. Because once we lose this history, it's gone forever. And uh, I like your documentary, this. A bit like old Jack Argreaves used to do. You know, he's got some fantastic videos out there, Jack Argreaves. But he's gone there. And if it weren't for him spending a bit of time in his life filming all them old ways of farming and country life, no one would, no one would have known what it was like. So, like I say, there's a something for you. Any, anywhere in the southeast of England, I'd like to come to your farm and listen from your stories. If your father's alive, your grandfather, that'd be fantastic. A little chat with them. Get some old stories of what it used to be like. Animals, arable, whatever. You know, it'd be great to see you. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. Thanks for coming along. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And uh, like I said at the beginning, hit that subscription button and perhaps ring the bell. I know all the big um, boys do. Tom Penwinson, the Funky Farmer, all them guys do. So, anyway, give it a subscription from me. I'd really appreciate it and a thumbs up. You know, anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. Cheerio for now. Thank you.